Alright guys, so uh, conformity here again. Uh, in this tutorial, I just wanted to run you through how to uh, get a VST plugin working in FL Studio. So uh, if you've just installed FL Studio and you're, you're wanting to get started with your VST plugins, and you know what a VST plugin is, then uh, you're in a good place to uh, start uh, start with them in FL Studio. So what you need to do is first you need to make sure that your VST plugins are located in the correct spot. So likely when you install them, they'll be in one of these folders. It'll be either in Program Files, VST Plugins, or alternatively, it will be in uh, another spot, probably Program Files, and it could be in Steinberg, Cakewalk, among many other alternatives, depending on the vendor of your uh, pro your Digitalia workstation. But um, there's a special thing in FL Studio where you have to have your VST plugins in a pro folder called VS uh, Common Files VST2. So if I go to Common Files, I go to VST2, I'll see a list of all my VST plugins. Now notice here, um, my VST plugins are all organized in folders, and a lot of the time, what will happen is by default they may install to a folder. But if you just, but in most cases, you'll have to select uh, VST2 uh, as a specific folder for your plugin, and sometimes it may not install to a folder. So what I recommend doing is making a folder for all of your plugins, and then um, moving the plugins into that folder. So uh, you can maybe have separate levels for different versions of plugins uh, in, in terms of directory. Um, but but I definitely recommend doing that. So because some uh, some digital audio workstations, namely Sonar, will um, will actually categorize your VST plugins by folder, and you can sometimes select that as an option. In other v in other digital audio workstations, I believe uh, Steinberg uh, Cubase does allow you to do that. So. Um, now that now that you've got your VST plugin within the correct folder, um, you have to make sure that your options are set up correctly. Now we went over this in the last tutorial, but you need to make sure you go to File Settings, and you can see that your VST plugins is set correctly for your 32-bit uh, VST plugins, and that would be right there. If you need to change it, just click this folder icon and select the correct location. Right now it's okay, so we'll leave it at that. Now that's finished. What you need to do is go to Channels, go to More. And you should see a list of the already active plugins. The F right here is like a check, so it basically means that the plugin is enabled. You can enable or disable plugins by simply clicking the F button or re-enabling it like that. Okay. To scan for more plugins, click this refresh thing below, and you can choose from two options. There's fast scan, and then there's scan and verify. Scan and verify. Verifying means that it will check that the plugin will run smoothly or will actually run in your digital audio workstation. Scan is a fast scan is just where it just checks through everything regardless of whether it'll work or not. So I just recommend fast scan since you'll see whether it will work or not. And any new plugin that you have will appear in red. In this case, I have all of my plugins already already right here. And you can go through and select the plugins that you want to enable. So make sure this time they'll because this is a this is a generator plugin, make sure these are generators that you do not select if effects for mixers for your mixer. So um, this FL Studio specifically will um, will be pretty picky about this. And if you choose, say, a, a, for example, I'll choose this uh, uh, this plugin right here, or say, so right there. And if I go to channels and I try to enable it. you'll see that it will not it will not work because it has to be loaded in the mixer so lesson learned do not do not check you uh, use, use the checkbox on those plugins now once once your plugins are selected they should appear right here you go to channel and you can and it goes add one and you can select whichever whichever plugin you want it to add so in this case I'll select alpha 64 because I did have that enabled and you can see that it loads fine in bridge mode everything's fine and then that's that's the standard way of doing it. So now I've got my plugin here. You can see that this is the plugin right here. If I click on it, I can see a little keyboard. And I can test what it sounds like. Okay. I can go through presets, blah, 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 blah. Here's another one. Okay, great. Now um, that's done. Now you probably have to figure out where you want this to be routed. Because right now it's just going straight to the master, which probably isn't what you want. So you need to go to this. Click this little icon here. This is the wrapper icon. 
and you can select where it's outputting to. Now make sure that now you're on. You have, this is a tabbed view here, so you can go. To, you can select the MIDI uh, MIDI port for this or the output port. If, so if you wanted to output to say another plugin uh, for the MIDI, uh, but this is the output right here. If I go to processing, I can select which output it is, and you can click and then move your mouse up or down to change the output. And right now, what I'd like it to be is I'd like it to be on one. So if I click one, and if I click the keyboard again, you'll see that it goes to insert one. So one means insert one. Now, if I want to, I can rename this channel and go alpha. I can even change the color too. So now there's my alpha. And that's great. That's exactly what I wanted. But what about larger plugins? What about multi-channel VST plugins? Well, for that, there's actually a, there's actually a similar process except it's a little longer to do. I'd like to run down that process and you'll see another video on my channel about how to uh, configure a multi-channel VST plugin. But for now, let's go to contact. Alright, so now I've opened contact and and what do you do? So now I've got my contact open and we'll go over this later. What contact is? It's a sampler and it plays samples um, from, a from a large sample. Think of it as a large uh, collection of samples and they've been each individually sampled which means recorded individually so the hit of say a drum can be recorded several different ways and uh, so, you can so you can achieve a different degree of realism. But, but what I'd like to show you is um, how to map, how to, how to do the output routing. Now there's something really, really interesting about the way the contact works and the outputs. So uh, by default, it will, it will look something like this. You'll have your stereo channel 1, which is right down here. Then you'll have your aux channels 1 to 4. So when you're using contact, you probably won't have just one channel. Uh, that you'll be using and there's actually a really interesting way of getting FL Studio to see things and to be able to work with your channels easier so I'd like to show you how to do that so what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to load a default template alright so now I've loaded up two instruments within contact and uh, what I chose is the uh, snare from EOP as well as the uh, legato ensemble horn plus trombone uh, patch from Sophobia 2 and as you can see, all I have is one stereo outputs ST1, and I have four aux outputs. So, um, so right now that's fine. Uh, I can I can send uh, all the information to ST1, and if I click here, I can get here the snare fine. But um, but that's probably not what we want to do. So let's go to processing and look at how things are laid out. So I can see all the outputs. I can see stereo one up to aux four as stereo channels. Um, but but what I want is I want each of these instruments to be assigned to a specific channel. So to do that, it's quite easy. All you have to do is go to outputs and go to batch functions and clear output and create a separate channel for each instrument. So let's do that. Didn't work there. So now I have two separate channels, two stereo channels for each instrument. And before I go to processing once again and route everything just as before, um, there's actually a way to get everything labeled because if you look at this stereo one to to uh, and uh, to aux four, that's wrong. Uh, our our outputs are named differently, and there's actually a way to uh, have them labeled. So before we proceed, there's actually an interesting thing you can do. If you go to presets and you go save current output as default, if you select VST plugin like this. And if you restart contact, now if I now if I look here, everything is look is looking perfect. And if I go here, I can see that everything has been labeled correctly. And I recommend taking these steps before setting up your uh, template. If you are make going to make a template, if you're doing any orchestral music, and um, so now that I've done that, I'll probably want to route everything. And instead of um, instead of going t going through tediously and setting everything up because you may have some things going on in uh, channel in the inserts in specific inserts it'll probably be very tedious to go through the whole list and there's actually a video on this but anyway I'll, I'll go to s I'll start at seven right here and I want it to, to uh, increment by one uh, uh, from here on in and what you can do is if you se select seven here and you go auto map in outputs it will actually output each channel uh, consecutively increasing by one and this is a very useful tool you can use to uh, easily uh, route your uh, your plugins. So I recommend uh, doing that. Now, if I was to set it to six or five, it would it would uh, it would set itself up accordingly, which is great. 
So um, now that that's finished, everything is great. If I go to if I go to this here, I hear it, and if I go to here, I do this. So that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted, and that's how you would do a multi-out VST. So that's really it for VSTs. Um, there's there's also the VSTs within the mixer. So let's go through that. Um, similar process. If I click on one of these little things here, these this arrow, this is what prompts me to add a new effect. So I click on that. I'll see a list of the plugins that are already enabled. And similarly, if I go to more, I can enable or disable more plugins. So I'll go to fast scan as before. And I can see a list of plugins. So uh, right now I'd like to enable, say, um, M Reverb. Why not? So if I go here, I can see that M Reverb is right here. Click on it. Oh, there's a problem. Let's try another one. Let's go to. Um, Actually, let's, let's load a specific VST. So let's go to more. Let's go to this one. So now the mountain my VST has been loaded, and that's exactly what you want. Now, there's actually a, a really interesting thing to do. So now, now that I have this set up, um, I can I can move the uh, I can change how loud the plugin is how like the wet dry say the wet dry so um, I can change how loud it is um, how much how much it sends out uh, uh, from this from this plugin and so what what happens is everything from here so if I was to add a second plugin say like uh, fruity delay two what happens first is the signal will hit uh, TB reverb and then it will hit uh, fruity delay two and that's that's what it has to well, that's what has to happen if you want to move it up all you need to do is click this thing and click move up and now it happens in a different order first uh, whatever's hitting this hits the delay and then it hits the reverb so let's just take a listen just to have fun and hear what it sounds like so hear this let's make sure that it's routed properly so we want this to be seven same process as before let's go to seven. And auto map, re auto map ports, and I can click on. It. And now let's compare it to this. Oop. So there are two different, um, two different sounds there, and uh, you have you have to play around with them to get the right uh, sound you want. So there's one alternative that I wanted to go over that's really cool, and um, and to remove a plugin, so let's just remove up this plugin. Let's go to none. And um, what you can actually do is use something, use something called the patcher. So if I go to patcher right here, you'll see what it looks like. It's a lot like uh, any visual sort of uh, linking sort of application, like uh, kind of like Max MSP or something like that, where you link uh, specific um, plugins to and from each other. Um, if you're familiar with Reason, it's a lot like that, moving your wires around and such. Um, so, so now I now I've got a little thing here with uh, from FL Studio and to FL Studio. And what you can do is you can add a specific plugin. So I right click, I can add a plugin. Let's add, say, um, let's let's add. You can add you can add both effects and you can add generators. So you can see they're categorized like that. But I'd like to add FL Keys. So now my FL Keys is right there, and you can see that that it, visually it's going from FL Studio directly to FL Studio, the output. And I can add any series of plugins I want. So let's say I wanted to add a uh, parametric EQ, and I can select what goes to that. So from FL Studio is is fine. We want the keys to go to this. So let's let's send the keys out to this. Let's just drag and drop to this, and then out we then we might want to add something else between. So let's say we want to add a phaser. Now I've got my phaser. A phaser requires an input, and so let's take the output from this EQ and go straight to the phaser. Oops. My bad. So now I've got my my the sound from uh, from the parametric EQ going straight to the uh, the uh, phaser, and it's actually pretty straightforward. Now I now I can go in any order I want. What this does 
is this gives me the ultimate flexibility of uh, any routing I want. So I could have the uh, keys going to many places at once. So it's really visual and it's very useful. And the same thing applies to, uh, to generators. So uh, essentially what you have here is you have the um, the step sequencer view as well as the uh, as well as the mixer view all sort of combined into one program. So if you like working this way visually, this is a great alternative. Uh, if you if you're like me, if you like to have everything categorized, you can create groups, and we'll show you later. Um, then then that might not be the uh, best alternative for you because you can't really um, you can't really group the generators. But let let me show you. There is something called a dashboard. So if I was to load a plugin. Uh, let's say I'll load um, say I'll load Nexus oh, my bad. Okay. so I can add a plug into this dashboard here let's let's do it this way my bad Nexus, uh, see. oh right so here's my <laughs> so I'll just go to I'll just go to editors and you can see that I have several plugins already loaded. So uh, this, this gives you sort of a an easy view of all your plugins. You can make them smaller like this or make or and in this way you can easily see what's going on. You can see the levels there as well. There's some other things you can do. You can add plugins or controls quickly. You can show specific events, parameters, etc, etc. So hopefully that helped. That's essentially all you need to know for VSTs. I'll just say one more thing. You can actually load the uh, patcher within uh, as a channel as well so I'll show you what that is make sure it's enabled as we showed you before through the VSC so just go to patcher and there you go same 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 concept as before so what you can do is you can just group your patchers uh, however you want you can even group them within uh, filters so it's pretty cool um, now just so you know how, where, where you're outputting uh, it's pretty straightforward uh, just follow this diagram here there is no like um, there is no uh, wrapper for this since it's just n it's going straight to FL Studio. So hopefully that helped. Um, if you have any questions, fire off. And uh, well, in the next tutorial, we'll be going over uh, configuring uh, some advanced things in FL Studio as well as looking at automation and um, and MIDI. So hopefully that was helpful. Thanks. Bye.